on today's Minute of the Apes, which casting call would you answer for sinister person in thick pebble glasses or man sipping coffee eating a giant ass an apple fritter? Fritter. Yeah, fritter. They're both in this scene. We are determined to know what the apes want, war or peace. The only good human is a dead human. Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, a daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Apes movies, one minute at a time. I'm Todd, you are... Richard. And you are... John. Look at that, we have the same... Same. I all, same. Of, a sudden, I all of a sudden had a moment of Mel Brooks. The <laughs> same, uh, the same personalities back again. We are here, middle of the week, minute Wednesday. 33. You yes, it is day. Wednesday. Pump. So, do you ever... Pump. As a comic book owner, yeah. it is always new oh, comic day. Oh, Wednesday is always new comic book day. I uh-huh. actually know every day of the week or every date of the day of the month just based upon what day Wednesday falls on. So if you say, hey, what's the day today? I'd have to go, let's see, Wednesday is, is the 13th. That back. means I have to count backwards to Sunday. So, because we haven't done it in a while, let's plug your comic book store. Hey, I have a comic book store, everybody. It's called Zeus Comics. It's in Dallas, Texas, and we sell comic books. And what's the website of people wanting? Oh, it's ZeusComics.com. Hey. So, Sean and I, because we record these on Sundays, which are the day that we get to put our order in for the week. For comics, for, yes. For yeah, yeah. Is that, I know it's we, checklist we, we, on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we, do, we do a thing called a checklist, and our customers go there on Sunday. They select the comics they want. Uh, it gets held from when it comes out on Wednesday. You actually have a buy now option and a shipping option if you wanted to get your stuff. You get 10% off for doing it. Uh, all the comic books are up there. The checklist stays up for a week, but it goes live every Sunday. And a lot of people describe you know, waking up Sunday morning as the, like Christmas. I'm going to go do my oh, checklist do right my now checklist. and get my comic books. I literally, this morning, I know I'm going to see you guys. So my mind's already on you. Right. And I, I play my, my silly Star Wars game. Uh-huh. I read my email and check Facebook. And then I say... It's time to order comics. Yay! Yeah, I'm part of Everybody's Sunday. Yes. yes, you are. Me and church. <laughs> you and church. Okay, we're going to shift away from right. church now. <laughs> talking about the, Let's uh, go talk to about minute, a movie? Yeah, yeah, Minute 33 of Escape from the Planet of the Age. Sean, right. tell us what's going on. We start Minute 33 with Lewis and Dr. Branton. She didn't go to medical stool, school. To she went Stevie. to medical stool. Medical she stool. Went to stool. <laughs> that, that sounds really <laughs> painful. Uh, they're staring at each other, and it ends with the reporter asking if Hathline can explain in terms a viewer can understand. All right, let's take a listen to Minute 33 of Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Stand by. Good evening, this is Bill Bonds reporting from Los Angeles, where the biggest story since the moon landing broke this morning when two apes talked, I repeat, talked to the Presidential Commission of Inquiry. With me this evening in the studio is Dr. Otto Haslein. He is a senior scientific advisor at the White House, and he'll be giving us his views on the crucial statement made at this morning's session. And Dr. Haslein, as I recall, when you asked the male ape where he was from the female replied from your future yes you believe that absolutely i think it is the only explanation well and maybe the explanation needs some explaining now uh, you've written several learned dissertations on uh, the nature of time could you explain in terms that our viewers at home will understand all right as of minute 33 we have a planet's worth of humans plus two living apes and one dead ape dead ape so we we don't spend much time with with our previous scene. This the the, the predominant thing here is we've got Hasline in a, in a television Reporter, studio. Yeah. Is there anything that I'm not thinking of that we need to touch on with Stevie and Lewis that's really relayed that is information that's crucial? I don't think there is. The way I looked at this, minute. we saw the Earth destroyed, and we we have the two of them just kind of yeah, looking looking at each, at each other, right. like where does this lead us? Right. <clears throat> and then it is it, the script. It is a hard cut. It goes, and we saw the Earth destroyed. Shock. 
cut. So they they say shot cut to right. uh, tight close up, sinister person in thick pebble glasses. It's can literally like the editor, or the director, can right? I see the the script. I'm yeah, just, I'm curious on how they did the very shot bottom. Cut. Yep. As soon as you say shot cut. It it just made me wonder if they're actually calling for it because those always are – it means a start cut. But he just wanted a start cut from that moment. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, what do you – you could linger on the – we saw the Earth destroyed, but where does the conversation go from there, right? Well, you, and, and they're, the, the writer is going to put that in. It, every every scene has to transition somehow, and they're not going to call for dissolves. They're or not going to call for cuts and, unless there's a reason that they, they feel it needs to yeah, go they, there. They try not to put – directions camera directions in a script unless it's absolutely necessary right they, they, you want to the thing any book any class will teach you as a screener you want to use your words to describe a situation or a setting so much so that the director can't visualize in their mind's eye any other way of doing it you rarely want to call for camera moves or anything unless for some reason it's specific to and i think probably in that that reason i wanted to see that it does feel like it is Go. meant to Oh. If I shot cut over here, mm-hmm. that thought of the earth blowing up lingers in my head, and I'm forced to think about it when I get the next scene. Well, the shot cut is literally to a director or an editor who's sitting behind a booth uh, watching a scene that's about to take place with Hasline. What I love about the scene is if you pause it for just a second, there's a man in the background with a giant ass apple fritter in his hand <laughs> taking a big old I didn't even sit. see that. He's there for for just this split second. You don't right. even – it's like – because I wanted to see the sinister person with thick pebble glasses not knowing I was getting a twofer – with right with, oh with this guy God. with yellow glasses you know he says uh and they are very yellow he goes stand by you know and then he points to basically the the studio facility right. but i just i wanted to see what this sinister person was and i'm like it's not really that sinister it's just kind of a shot cut and then there's a guy, the guy behind with a giant fritter and a coffee cup drinking so now mm-hmm. that you brought that up one of the things that hit me and a lot of my notes here and sean i'm sure you'll be in line with this being Having been in the television I production business, it's going to be the first note that I have. There, there's a lot of weirdness as far as what you expect to see in a television production studio. Mm-hmm. That's wrong because yeah. there is no studio in the world that an engineer would walk go, not go in and go, "Is your cup covered?" And you do not uh-huh. bring food into my studio. <laughs> I have had people yell at me so many times. No that liquids. Crap. No. No. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have uh, you and I did live TV, and we've worked with people who do the floor yep. and live news, and that whole setup is horseshit. The yeah. cameras, the studio. Video, everything about it. the map in the back. Oh, it's so horrible. But, hey, this is this is better than like the random hallway that they shot the other <laughs> scenes in when they were doing the, from Britain and re- from reporting else. from yeah. all around the world. Yeah, all around the world. We put a we put a tiger on the table to let you know we're reporting from. Wherever However, there is something I do like about the set because at least when you look at a TV set, most of the time when you walk up on it, you go, "That's it," and it looks so much yeah, better it through looks the smaller lens. Smaller in real life. So at mm-hmm. least that you get some of that aspect when they start doing the shots i thought okay this is truly a set where it's horseshit and, and it looks a little bit better but even behind mr apple fritter right what the is going on behind him that looks more like a norad control for missile launch norad. instead of tape decks and yeah, playbacks i don't know it's just the weirdest set that might be the same set they use for the opening shot when they're in the military it right? probably is we, you know, I, yeah I, yeah it looks like it has got all the panels and the lights behind it i mean it looks like they they, they just reused a set right. that they've from another movie or whatever so we, it's a then it, he then you know stand by and it kind of four three it kind of cuts to, uh, behind the cameras, and we've got the what do you call the guys that the he's on the floor floor director, floor director. Floor direct, he's on the floor director you can see him do this and he kind of passes off to the reporter mm-hmm. at Hassline. I love how com- again maybe he's just tall. I don't know, but like he's got one leg out. He is con- Hassline is confident. He's, he's sitting behind. He, he's man spreading. He's sitting behind the desk, but he's letting just one foot just kind of sit outside of that desk as he's kind of back and relaxed. Well, when you got balls that big, you seriously, that's what it looks like. Legs. Yeah. Well, we we you know we're we're going to the set. Yeah, we've got uh, a green square. We've got a desk that's on wheels. We've got a map behind it on a wood board. We've got green curtains kind of off to either side of the map. But exposed is the rest of the studio, so it looks kind of haphazard. Most studios, when you when, even if they're small, mm-hmm. you're going to simply have some sort of sound baffling or insulation or something that would cut the sound. But if you look on that, it almost looks like they have file cabinets and technical right. stuff. Yeah, on they the side. Okay, they 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 they, 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 they again they faked the studio. It's so funny to me because they're probably in a studio. Yeah, well, yeah, that's well they it. are, yeah. And They're that's what I thought. You're yeah. also with tons of people who have worked on sets and studios before. It's no better than that. Could yeah. somebody simply say, look, you don't need to dress this shit up. It's, you know, most production, when you get into a set, it literally is this weird little fake 
set up in the middle of a big room. Yeah. That's what it is. Big that- empty room. You've got the walls around it. So, so, so if you kind of even just mistakenly track to a certain area, just you feel like you're still part of the same room right. area, not. And you could even zoom back and show the actual lights on set yeah, because the, 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 you're on a television set. That's that's to be expected. So the, one of the other few things I'm going to nitpick at, I'm going to jump ahead and then we can really talk about what happens in the scene, but drove me batshit crazy was when it went inside the control room and they had the four monitors up top, which are the the pre-type mm-hmm. stuff that the tech, technical director is going to go to. But the far right one is rolling static. <laughs> And oh, I'm yeah, like, when we get, when we get to the monitor, I, that was on my comment. And so I want to get, I, yeah, and I want to get this out of the way now. It, that would be another engineer going, what the, what is this? Especially when we go to Haslon's tape, when we see that in a little bit, that's where it comes from. And it even has a leader, a countdown leader. I, I don't understand who controlled this set. Because they would have known how this – they should have known how yes. this would all unfold anyway. Yeah, that yeah. countdown leader should have been up, and most playbacks on tape – and I was a tape playback mm-hmm. person for a long time – have a jog wheel that allow you – and what you'll do is you actually keep your thumb and you roll back and forth to keep it active. So when the director calls for it, you're you popping it play. and you go. Now, nowadays, it's all digital, so it's very different. But in that day, that's how that worked. Oh, my God. I, I realized maybe they wanted some movement. But they should have had it queuing or anything like that. It was just – that's broken. An engineer would <laughs> shit themselves if that were happening. So now that all the production crap's out of the way yeah. and, and Sean and I can walk away from our past life, yes, let's done. talk about – we have Otto. Well, is, is this yeah, the first time we hear him Otto, called yeah. Otto? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is the first time okay, so we Otto. Let's, so let's talk about Otto and his posture now. Well, okay. So the this the setup is that when, when we cut back, it goes full shot TV studio – the wall clock is ticking to 7 p.m., and I have no idea why Dane wanted that script because there is no clock in the set. He probably wanted that so it showed that it was the nighttime Prime news. Time that news. It was the evening news, mm-hmm. that that's what it was. Yeah. Talk clicking to 7 p.m. As we pull back on Hassline, about to be interviewed by Bill Bonds. And Bill he's Bond. named in the script as Bill Bonds. So I was like, and they say his name, Bill Bonds, <laughs> 8 million times. So I had to go look up, is there a real Bill Bonds? Right. And and to that point, Richard looked at me, and I think he was a little disappointed. May, in may have been disappointed because Chris I, bio guy. Because like, I hey. love finding the bios and knowing yeah. who they are. I I really didn't think about it. And what does Richard find? But that Bill Bonds, who was born uh, February twenty third of nineteen thirty two, and unfortunately passed away December thirteenth of two thousand fourteen, was an American television news anchor and reporter, best known for his work at WXYZ TV in Detroit, Wait, Michigan. No, my zipper's up. <laughs> so he was a news anchorman that basically was in, in the, the 70s and it seems that according to you can read this he has tons of stuff interviews now he only did two film roles he was in it takes a thief in 1970 and then escape from the planet of the apes so apparently his stature within being a news broadcaster is enough that they decided they want some authenticity of actually putting someone people might know. So he was in Detroit and he actually moved over to ABC in Los Angeles, KABC in Los Angeles. And they mentioned in the script, you know, a shot and cause we should see it on TV, but not mass TV screen after ABC identification announcement. So whatever Dane wanted, whether, whether, whether Bill Bonds was cast later on whether Dane just said, hey, I need somebody from L.A. that can do this to add some authenticity. I mean, they really went out and found somebody who worked at ABC at this particular moment at the local studios. But it wouldn't be a national broadcast, so I have no idea if Bill Bonds would be really known nationwide. Nationwide, yeah. Yeah, well, what he may have wanted was you're already going to have Hassline <clears throat> touching on a theory that's confusing in, it, in in its own way. You at least get someone who understands – I mean, let's look at what Gail King did this week with R. Kelly right, and right, how, how right. well you – if you're a good interviewer, you know how to – even in the moments of chaos, you know how to keep it calm and keep it going. And there is authenticity to how he asked the questions and trying to help the viewer understand. So maybe that's what they were going for. I mean he's, he stays to the script. He doesn't really kind of go off script at all in terms of the questions that he right. asks. So Dane's trying to mimic how a reporter asks questions as opposed to actually having Bill Bonds ask the question. Right. But I, I – so they decided to hire an actor who either had some notoriety in L.A. or Detroit. That would be familiar. Or they hired him because they knew that he could actually pull off being a reporter, as opposed, a journalist, as opposed to just being an, an actor they hired. Or maybe the producer knew him. Maybe the producer knew him, and that's why he's in here. I'd be curious if Dane actually had somebody else in mind. Right. Maybe they wanted uh, uh, Walter Cronkite to come in and actually do this moment, and they, they just didn't – they couldn't have the budget or the whatever. It would be interesting to find out. 